Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive, the series in which me and Zenrot will watch all Shonen Jump anime throughout the entire history of the world itself and many other things and come rain, sleet, shine, work, <laughs> a lot of work, <laughs> we will so figure much out work. Just so a crazy much amount work. of work. So much work, we will find a way to watch them all and that's what we're doing here today. Say hello, Zen. Hello, everybody. Yeah, it's been a bit, but don't worry, we were always waiting for the return to talk about Shonen Jump stuff. It's just that work decided that we should have other plans for yeah, both of us. Yeah, real asshole. 100%. The worst enemy of all mankind, of course. But it's okay, because we're here to talk about Gintama, finally again. Today, just episodes 86 and 87, we were originally going to do the other three, but I was too busy to see the other three. Which is probably what I'm going to start asking from now on, that people tell us that if there's any arc that are similar to this one, where it is perhaps too serious, and would therefore ruin the quality of the comedy episodes that we would watch before or after it. Yes, would... it's it's become a problem. Yes, it's <laughs> happened like... now. I, I was able to avoid it this time, but while I was watching this, I said, oh, those other episodes are going to get shredded if I watch them, <laughs> because I am just not in, like, I'm in a, like, completely different headspace now. Like, that's too much of a mood whiplash, and they would be destroyed. Zen actually was able to see two of them, two of the three of them that were to be seen. I saw all of them, but the very last one we were supposed to yeah. watch. And uh, we'll see how he feels by next week. But if going in today, you were ready to just completely lay waste. To do this. <laughs> yes. Uh, to put it simply, yes. Yeah, it's just, it's just not fair. So we're going to ask our Gintama dudes out there if we know for specifically a big another arc that's like this one that is like real serious to the point where because we've seen some other ones like the, the bear one, for example, it gets pretty serious. Not to the level of this one. <laughs> This yeah, was a no, this was like some, oh man this was some real shit right here. <laughs> Ex yes, one hundred percent. So we ask you guys to help us with that, of uh, please going forward. We want to make sure we always give the fairest shot to them, and we've decided that the fairest shot is that for episodes like this, they need to be separated completely, like in a contamination zone, <laughs> <laughs> just off on their own. Yeah, yeah, it's too detrimental to the entire soup. <laughs> You just gotta give it, we need like a week break. So yeah, with that ahead, now let's actually get to the episodes. Episode 86, it's often difficult to sleep when you're engrossed with counting sheep. Go ahead, Zen, tell us what this one is about. Episode 86 uh, is, if, if you remember from a long time ago, that little silly preview where he's like counting dead Hichikatas. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the follow-up to that. Uh, Okita's older sister comes to visit, whose name is Mitsuma. Uh, it turns out that she is getting married. Um, and the husband lives in Edo, so she can spend time with Okita again. Okita's very close with his sister. Uh, he they turns do into like a completely some, different person. Yeah, they have like some various hijinks, like at the Shinsengumi base, and then uh, they go to like a restaurant where he ends up enlisting Gintoki to pretend to be his friend, so that the sister does not have to worry about the fact that he has no friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, he immediately uh, does not want to be a, a part really of this. Funny reveal there. <laughs> yeah. We get a really good reveal there where um, the sister is just as much of a sadist as he is because she really <laughs> likes uh, spicy food. Like, she's mm -hmm. all about shit that's really spicy. And so uh, she abuses that to, like, her... her she has a, She's really sick, basically. Mm -hmm. She has, like, some kind of lung condition that's going to She has it. tuberculosis because the real Okita had tuberculosis. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it's it's a reference. It. Yeah, it's a kind of like a reference to the fact that in actual history, Okita dies of tuberculosis, and obviously this one is the same character who is supposed to be Okita, but he doesn't have tuberculosis. So they kind of found a way to reference that in some way, which I think is kind of cool. Also, very sad. Yes. Um. So. She uh, 
is like her condition gets worse when she's stressed out. So he buys Gintoki a bunch of parfaits to get him to stay and, and pose as his friend because he obviously loves sugary shit. Um, mm. And she covers one in Tabasco sauce. And when he refuses to drink it, she like starts having a, an episode. <laughs> so and she I don't know if she's faking it or if it's just like um, uh, she says eventually she uh, was spitting out the Tabasco that she was eating. That was what happened. Well, that that was the blood. But in the actual like when she's asking Gintoki to drink it, she's getting like that Okita <laughs> sadist face. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> she does yeah. get them. Yeah. Um, to get him to drink it, and he ends up like chugging it in a panic because he's one of the best jokes in it is when he's like she's choking, and so he's like F- fuck, fine, fine, I'll do it. Just give me some water, and then she starts vomiting blood, <laughs> and he's like, oh my god, she doesn't even want me to have water. <laughs> he doesn't want me to have any water. Uh, yeah, so he chugs it, and it's spicy, and then um. We find out there's some history between her and Hijikata um, while Hijikata is investigating the potential of a uh, black market arms dealer in the government who Mm -hmm. is, like, selling weaponry to the general public, uh, to the Ronin in, like, the Katsura anti-foreigner faction. Uh, We find out kind of why... Sogo hates Hijikata so much. There's some bad blood between him and uh, Hijikata because of Hijikata's past with his sister, where they were like lovers. Although I don't think the lover reveal is until the next episode. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we get a, we get a long like backstory flashback with Hijikata and. Okita when they're kids at like Kondo's do like is it is it Kondo's dad's dojo is that who that is yeah I believe that is where they trained we th- we said yeah. we've seen it in a previous episode but either way it's the dojo yeah the dojo where they all train together mm-hmm. um and we get more that Okita's basically never liked Hijikata because he feels like everyone ignores him in favor of Hijikata. And they have like this fight with one another where like they're using their training weapons, like like, like kendo sticks, uh, and they're having like this big fight with one another. Um, where Okita basically says, "Leave my sister alone because she's gonna die soon," and like I just want her to be happy. I don't want you to keep fucking with her. I just want her to live a good life while she can. Yeah, and um, this is after the part where he was at his house where she faints. Right, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah he yeah. he leaves her there <laughs> they, with Koki. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Hijikata comes up kind of coincidentally, um, yeah, and they bump gonna... into each other, and then she that stresses her out so much that she has an episode. Yes, and then the, while they're inside there, there's something going on as well, but Hijikata's not mentioning it until they have the fight where he reveals that the um, the dude that she's marrying is likely selling arms. And that's why they actually start in the beginning. It's training, but then it starts to turn into that the thing where Okita doesn't want him to. It's not that he doesn't want him to specifically go for him. He's asking to wait until after his sister is dead to kind of yes. go after him, and Hijikata is refusing. He's uh, choosing to ignore that he said any of the things he just said. Right, because he's like, if you're gonna be compromised or whatever, I'm not gonna listen. Or, like, yeah. I'm not going to... One, I'm not going to hear you out about it, but also I'm not going to, like, turn you in or anything. Like, Yeah, he's like, yeah. just leave me alone. <laughs> leave Basically. me alone, guy. Basically, yeah. Yeah, and then they... Fight? I think it ends at that. It, it, they, they have their little fight. Um, Hijikata wins. Hijikata does win the fight, which is strange, because usually they say that Sogo's the better one of the two. Um... I think th- that's where it ends, right? He just says that, like, I uh, I hate that guy, and then it ends when he's laying on the floor, a ball yeah. bloody. Yeah. yeah. It cuts him off and ignores his... He basically ignores him and says, I'm going, and that's it. Um, and this is... Uh, the, the, the thing that also got him off is that he says he does not care what happens to 
uh, Mitsuba at all. But yeah, that's this episode for now. And we'll get into the next one. But yeah, this episode is the start in the introduction. This episode uh, wastes very little time because they, I think they understand from the get-go. Like, from the get-go, this episode starts, like, with the sad music. I feel like anytime there's, like, a musical change in the way of an episode starting, when it doesn't start with a dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun, it means that this episode's about to be either very serious or completely different from the others. It's like a musical cue to let you know something's wrong. And they have this, like, theme that kind of brings you into it, and it kind of plays throughout both these two episodes. Um... But yeah, I like the introduction to Okita's sister. It's very interesting to see kind of Okita completely turn into a different person when he's with them, uh, when he's with his sister. Like, he, it, t- it turns to the point where he's a completely different person that the other members of Shizu and Gumi that were not there from the beginning are like, uh, what the hell's they're like actively laughing because they've never seen him act so nice. Yeah, they're literally like, um, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, it's the weirdest thing to them to see him like this. And I also like that even when he's acting like this, he'll say, like... Because there's a point when they're in the the restaurant eating, which is called, like, Battle Royale, which is a reference to the Battle Royale in a specific, like, Japanese restaurant, which I thought was really funny. Um, There's a point where he's, like, telling her, oh, look outside, and he looks outside, and he quickly pulls out a rocket launcher. (laughs) Yeah, because they're, like, following them with binoculars. Yeah, laughing at him. And he says, like, oh, it's too smoggy in here. And she's like, is there? He's like, yeah, just look outside. And he shoots inside. She's like, oh, the air quality in here is so bad. He's like, I told you. Yeah, the air sucks in here. (laughs) Oh, it's so bad. And then that causes uh, Yamazaki to have an afro for the next two episodes. (laughs) And everyone goes like, hey, where's that afro? everyone keeps yelling at him about it, yeah. He's like, it just happened. He's like, what do you mean it just happened? (laughs) Don't be so... He's, like, just so accepting of it. He's like, I have this afro now. It's cool. Um, I liked her. I liked that there's a kind of thing which is pretty funny that is she's kind of like the opposite of Hijikata. In a lot of ways, they kind of set up that Hijikata and Mitsuba are star-crossed lovers by the fact that he is a man who loves mayonnaise and she is a woman who loves nothing but spicy stuff on top of things. Mm-hmm. Two opposites completely attracting each other. Two ships passing each other in the night eating their disgusting food. <laughs> So I like that aspect of her. I like, like you said, there's like hints of the sadist part of her as well, where she's like looking at, um, when she gets like, <laughs> when she really wants him, like she really does it out of nowhere, where she just puts the spicy stuff on top of the, uh, on top of his parfait. And even he's like, you don't eat spice with a parfait. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Cause she's like, what? You don't like spicy stuff? And he's like, well, this isn't something that's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a sweet. Very similar to Hijikata when he would just put mayonnaise on anything. Because he's done that before, too, where he's, like, said, like, try out my amazing new chocolate parfait mayonnaise. They're like, no, please. <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> um... I like the kind of introduction. They do a little slow introduction. It makes it seem like the husband is maybe not the worst guy in the world, but it's pretty obvious that it's all kind of a guise once it goes to the next episode. And Hijikata actually makes a pretty good reference as to why, like, because a lot of people are saying, like, he seems like a nice guy. Why are you treating him so harshly? But then in the next episode, he completely destroys it with, like, one sentence. With facts and logic, he hits him with it. And he's like, no. You people are stupid. I'm gonna go fuck this guy up. You go stay with her. Um, yeah, I really liked Hijikata in this episode as well. Even in the flashbacks, showing him kind of like young. I also like seeing uh, the young Kondo, which you get a little bit more of him in the next one. Where Kondo is actually like... They make reference to the fact like, yeah, Okita was kind of a loner. And he probably would have always been that way if it wasn't specifically for Kondo. Kind of like actually taking an interest in him and kind of giving a shit about this kid that seemed like really lonely like you see uh, okita like playing around making like a weird thing in the sand and then kondo is there and he's just trying to be helpful like he smiles and he makes him feel uh like actually appreciated and loved in some ways which is what makes it understand why you why okita hates hijikata so much because once hijikata shows up he kind of takes the attention of both of them so you finally understand why he just absolutely cannot stand him anymore yeah, why he just fucking hates this guy? Yeah, yeah, because he, he uh, kind of yeah, he feels like replaced a little bit. Yeah, and I can definitely see that, and 
especially like as they mentioned he's a kid that just always grew up alone he finally felt like he had two people that would kind of pay attention to him and have things and then this dude shows up out of nowhere and fucking takes them from him so yeah i also like intoki in this episode i thought he was very funny <laughs> basically everything they was doing went down to the fact that when uh when he's saying like, "Oh yeah, your f- your brother needs to find better dudes. If he hangs out with people like me, then he's just gonna turn into a bad person." Because she asks him like, "It's very clearly that you know you're not friends, right? You're just someone who he roped in." And then he kind of says, without confirming it, he basically confirms like, "I do consider him a friend, so don't worry about it." I, but he really shouldn't be hanging around with me, <laughs> and he should leave me yeah, alone. Yeah, it's like I do, but like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a way that's very similar to, which goes back to Okita in the next episode where he says, like, what did I deserve to have such bad friends? (laughs) 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 Which I think is very pointed and good. There's also a point where apparently they go, they just go to Jump Festa, which is really funny. (laughs) Because Jump Festa is pretty... Which is apparently the same Jump Festa where, like, the first Gintama OVA was shown, and that's like a uh festival of like appropriate bag design like it's the actual bag design they had at the event oh wow really (laughs) yeah wow that's great and there's a lot of like there's a lot of uh references to other shonen jumps up obviously from when the bag which has ichigo and nar just straight up both of them on it yeah just ichigo and naruto are on it yeah yeah uh... and then they're all wearing one piece gear yeah, Chopper, uh, uh, Chopper's hat is worn by Gintoki, <laughs> which is really funny seeing it on an actual human being. And then uh, Okita has Usopp's goggles on, and Mitsuba has Nami's tattoo. Yeah, really well done. <laughs> I really enjoyed seeing all that. So, yeah, I thought... And then once the serious shit starts kicking in, and she's like in the hospital and stuff, it's really like... There, there's like a certain point where you just gotta like stop and kind of like watch it go but it, it, this there, certainly when like okita's having like his mental breakdown of saying like every single time every single th- like every time i try to be happy this fucking guy is there no i can't have anything in life like everything seems to go wrong because of hijikata even when it seems like there's this like this tiny sliver he ruins my happiness he ruins my sister's happiness he's just like fully like on hate so once that start starts, stuff starts and the sword fights go, and I was like, damn, just fully invested and ready for the next episode for this one. It was a great yes. episode. What do you think about it? Uh, I agree. It was a fat 10 out of 10 episode. It's really good. Uh, mm. The next one is probably even better, but this one was really good from start to finish. This one had a good balance of like, yeah, this is still Gintama's stupid humor. But also, it's really fucking good, like, emotional episode. Yeah, a lot, a lot of a fantastic balance of both, I would say. And again, they have to introduce Mitsuba and just immediately make you care about her. And I think they do, do a fantastic job of that doing there. I also think it's really funny that in some ways, it's... The, the backstory of Okita is kind of similar to Shinpachi. So in some ways, Kintoki's just, like, <laughs> replacing one for the other for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, very similar in some ways. Funny, he can't escape this. He will always be, <laughs> except for Okita's a, f- a fucking, based on the next episode, a fucking great swordsman. <laughs> yes. So, let's go on to the next episode. Episode 87. Perform a German suplex on a woman who asks you if she or the job is more important. <laughs> <laughs> Such a fuck. This time for this episode is so. There's gonna eventually be a point in time where we're, we're gonna record a awards season, and we're gonna have to seriously talk about the fact that this episode is probably one of the greatest emotional episodes, and the title of it is "Performing a German Suplex on a Woman Who Asked If She or the Job Is More Important." <laughs> yeah, oh, it's uh, it's a fantastic fucking episode, and it, it probably has the most insane dissonance between like this like severity of the content and the title <laughs> i would agree 100 uh, percent go ahead zen tell us what this episode's about so hijikata's sister is in the hospital uh her illness is getting worse 
it's revealed that she is not expected to get better this time. Uh, they have her in like the emergency room. Okita is outside with Gintoki. Kondo shows up, and they're all kind of sitting around. And then it fi- we find out that Hijikata is going to go take down the fiancé on his own uh, for various reasons, one being that he felt that um, Okita's position in the Shinsengumi could be at risk if it was discovered that his sister was dating an arms dealer. Um, and then at the end, he also just kind of says, like, you were treating the woman that I love like shit, so I can't let that slide. Yep, um, 100%. Yeah. We find out that Hijikata went all by himself, and the Shinsengumi rush off to try to get to him in time. Um, yeah, Yuzi Yamazaki is the one who tells him. Cause he yes, comes running and, and then says, they're all like, there's this giant rush of police cars going down the street, and then we have like Okita in the hospital, kind of thinking about like what happens if his sister's going to pass, and he's kind of talking to Gintoki. And he makes this like offhanded comment about how basically like he's got to go, he's got to go help Hijikata because he's not like he won't be okay with himself if um, something happens because he, he went all he, by himself. Yeah, and that he owes him a debt of some kind, or he feels yeah. like he would. Yeah, he feels like he would owe him. And he doesn't want to do that. And he makes this offhanded comment about like. I thank you for listening to my story, but it doesn't matter because honestly, you weren't listening anyway. But, you know, thanks. And then uh, Gintoki reveals that he was, in fact, listening the whole time. Um, and they jump on his scooter and rush to Hijikata. We f- get a really long fight scene of Hijikata um, just kind of fighting all these goons the best that he can, getting slowly overwhelmed by them while he's hacking down like an army's worth of them. Um, and Okita also trying to just makes reference to the fact that he knows that the reason that, um, because it's shown that his sister did confess to him and that he basically said, go your own way. And he says, I think I understand why you had to, like, you couldn't be with her because one of her condition and two of what you are, it just, yeah, it basically like. You you weren't willing to be with her because you didn't want to die on her, basically. Like, you didn't want to to make her unhappy by getting yourself killed, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, they rush off, and Okita kind of says outright, like, there's a chance that by the time I get back here, like, my sister will be dead. But, like, I have to do what I have to do. They rush off and they do manage to get to Hijikata in time right as the fiance kind of reveals that like oh I only went after her because I knew that she was the sister of someone high up in the Shinsengumi and if I could get him on my side then the Shinsengumi wouldn't fuck with me and I could do my evil business in peace and there's a nice little standoff where like the guy calls her a tool uh, to make him rich whereas Hijikata just says like I'm just here because I want the woman that I love to be happy uh, and then right when he's about to die, there's a big explosion where Kondo and the rest of the Shinsengumi come rushing in. The bad guy tries to get away, and he gets in like a car, and he's driving off. And then Hijikata jumps on top of the car and stabs through the roof into his shoulder, yeah. which hell, was badass I, as hell. Yeah, um, as a, after he was like, whatever, she may be dying, but I can use her. It's like the most evil shit ever. She may be dying, but she could still be a good hostage. And you just hear him go like... <laughs> So satisfying to see this fucking get stabbed. Yes. And then uh, as the car is speeding away, uh, Gintoki pulls up next to it because one of the goons leans out with a gun to shoot Hijikata off the roof. And Gintoki grabs him and like rips him out of the car. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he stabs the tire of the car to try to slow it down. And then Hijikata looks up the street and Okita is standing in the street with the car speeding towards them. So Hijikata jumps off the roof and stabs the other tire to uh slow it down a bit to, to slow it down and then as he slows it down okita just straight up slices the car in half yeah. uh and explodes and i presume kills the guy 100 um, percent. that guy is not living yeah he, he ain't in gone. rush hour three he's gone um then we cut back to the hospital um 
only to realize that they're to learn that Mitsuba is moments away from dying. Um, she has one little final moment with Okita. Um, she tells him that he's she's proud of the decisions that he made and who he is and the life that he's built for himself um, and how proud she was of him basically ever since the day that they all walked away to to go off and fight in the war and whatnot. Um, we see them all in the hospital crying, and then we cut to the rooftop of the hospital where Hijikata is eating a bag of these spicy snacks that she had asked Gintoki to get for her. Mm-hmm. And Gintoki gave them to Hijikata and was like, you deliver them instead. And, yeah, she uh, would much more care if you did it. Yeah, she would like you to do it instead. And then he's on the roof eating them. And he uh, says they're so spicy, they're making him cry. And then it cuts over to Gintoki also sitting on the roof, eating the same thing from a different bag. And then there's a little little pan away shot of the sky as Gintoki agrees that they're very spicy. Yeah. And then we cut to I. This is this is. I was like I was like I was so flabbergasted. By, so I, you saw ahead. This is the end of this ED, right? There's a new ED next episode. Yes. Yes. This ED. Which this entire time I've taken as a joke of, oh, this is a funny song to put with, like, yeah, their ED is all about, like, shirtless dudes, and it's supposed to be, like, this idea of, like, what a man is supposed to be like, and, you know, because obviously when they, whenever you see the ED, it's a bunch of shirtless dudes posing, like, heroically, but then there's also, like, a bunch of silly dudes, you know, and so that's what I took it as. And then it's used in this end of this episode, and it feels like once I've fully seen it in this one and understand the context of like oh no they're also kind of using this as like a a mention of like the kind of same thing here where it's like hijikata who refuses to specifically do you know like a kind of like a man's pride kind of thing like the ed is being used in two different ways in some ways and it's been leading up to this and this is the final moment of the song that you're seeing here which up until this point has been a way to show you like oh yeah this is kind of like a, a goof on what is a man's pride and stuff like that, showing all these shirtless dudes posing heroically like a regular ED. But then at the end, it kind of does end up being about something like that, where it's like the specific pride of Hijikata, the fact that he never went to go see her at the end. Like, at the end, he still thought that he was not good enough for her in some way, and he stuck to his guns and he never went to go see her, and that was the end of it. And I was like, God damn! That is such crazy levels of planning that they were able to take the silly ED ending thing and then actually make it thematically fit with this the arc of which it is the final ED for. Yes. I was like, holy shit, that's so good. <laughs> it's such a good way of using it. And they don't even reuse the old man one. It's like a new one with like falling leaves of something. It's just kind. leaves falling the whole time, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, damn. They, when th- I think Gintama might be one of the best animes to use their OP and EDs in amazing ways. Yeah, it really does, though. Like, they go crazy every time they have to do anything like that. They they will take, like, what seems like an innocuous, silly thing, and all of a sudden, you'll be sitting there like, god damn, <laughs> I'm yeah. fucking hurting. Yes, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it really is. There's no reason that the same ED where a naked Prince Hada shakes his ass at the screen yeah. <laughs> can have me, like, near tears the next time it's on. It's so crazy. You're right, because that's what this ED was for me, is that part where I see Prince Hada's gigantic ass. But now it's being used. And now I'm also thinking of this incredibly sad scene and just thinking of all... Oh, so fucking well done. This uh, let's get into the things we liked about this episode. Basically, everything, <laughs> every everything from start to finish. Yeah, like, yeah. For real. This might seriously be another case of just like straight up peak shit. Straight up for me, peak fiction it, immediately. Yeah, my, I think it might reach that with just like a tiny little two episode arc. It's so good and well done. There's some so back at the start here because I also like this thing where it's mentioned. Um. When Gintoki's trying to hide the fact that Yamazaki, why Yamazaki is there, because he goes to go visit her and gives her stuff, and then he is able to figure out Yamazaki is at the bed, because he says, like, oh, would you like this? He's like, oh, a sausage would be good, and he reveals that he's been underneath her bed this entire time spying on her. And the reason is, is that 
that Hijikata suspects of these things. No, that was in the previous episode. So in this episode, when the sister asks, hey, what were you talking to him about? He never reveals it because he reveals that, like, oh, you know, we were up to doing things that men do when they talk to each other. And he reveals he has a porn tape. And he says, like, would you like to see it? And she goes, like, oh, silly boys will be boys. And at this point, I was like, okay, did Gintoki just have that on him the entire time? <laughs> or did he go get that specifically so he could lie? It's <laughs> it's funny no matter what option. Every single option is funny. Yeah, either. there's no alternative where it isn't funny. Yeah, yeah the, every single, either, either one, he picked it up specifically as a cover, which is funny. Two, he already had it on him, and he decided to use it as a lie. So he already just has a fucking nurse porn tape on him all the time. Or three, he really did end up trading with Yamazaki, and he just like, oh, well, obviously we just did this, and that's why he was able to cover it up. Either way, all fucking fantastic stuff. I like that she kind of never really finds out the truth, uh, which is, I guess you can see it as a little bit of a sideways, but I guess they see it as kind of like a mercy thing. Um... She ends up not caring at the end, which is telling of a lot of things of how much maybe this marriage wasn't the greatest. But there's also a great line by Hijikata, um, because they keep saying, like, why are you going after him? She's dying, and you're all that's her fiance. There's obviously some love between them. Why are you doing this? And he makes the very good point, which he's saying when he's gonna go fight him, his wife is dying, and he's out here trying to cut a deal. Mm -hmm. there is no mercy for this man. And I was like, he's fucking right. Out of all the things for them to realize, like, they're giving him so... They're trying to say, like, oh, but he's this, and, like, think of her, and he's like, you're telling me think of her when he's not even thinking of her. How is that not right? <laughs> this guy deserves every wrong thing, and he's 100% right. And he cares for her in such a deep way that he's just like, this guy who's supposed to be, and he kind of gets into it a little bit later, that the thing he wanted the most for her was something that he could never give her, which was just a normal life, like normal children, just like a happy, regular life. It didn't matter if it was him, as long as she was happy, then he was happy with it. So this idea that at her deathbed she was never able to have that, He's going to be extremely pissed. <laughs> He's going to go fuck that guy up. Because he really only had one thing to do. And he couldn't even do that. So I love the mention there. There's some great stuff here with Kondo. Because Okita starts to get all uppity about it. Once it reveals that why Hijikata is not there. And he basically knocks the shit out of Okita. Once he says like, and I'm not Hijikata or something like that. And he's, he basically says, like, you keep thinking that there's a gap between the three of us. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's no gap. There's just us three. There's always just been us three. The fact that you think that there is a gap, we don't see that. You're our friend. And you know what you do sometimes? You punch the shit out of your friends if you think they're going out of line. I expect you to do the same for me or Hijikata. And I just want you to know... I would have punched the shit out of Hijikata if he said the things that you were saying to me. So I treat you all equally. So stop thinking this way. And I was like, damn. This is another one where I was like, God. So this, because uh, I've always been wondering, like, what would it be like to have a condo who wasn't just constantly the joke of everything? And to be fair, in these two episodes, there's still some social jokes about him. Like when they show him in the past and they show him, like, like, trying to break him up, and then he they both punch him, and then he gets angry, and he starts punching them back and stuff like that. But for the most part, he's not treated as a joke. Nobody calls him Gorilla. They give him actual legitimate respect. He's actually, like, thinking of ways of going, like, oh, yeah, you know, obviously Okita take the day off. Have Like, he's treated, he's actually actually acting like a leader. So it was yeah, kind of... Yeah, Kondo, like, he's a mm -hmm. weird character for me, because he's, like supposed to be like the leader of all these people and he never really gets any shine ever <laughs> like never. even his role as the leader is just like getting shit on all the mm -hmm. time by everyone mm -hmm. um and it was cool to to see him actually get like these moments where he gets to be the man for a while yeah he does and i thought that was great um the stuff he had there was great Obviously, that final slash by Okita, which we've seen him fight someone kind of semi-seriously, but even then, he was kind of goofing off. This is 100%, I'm pissed, you're fucking dying, I'm slashing your card, and it's blowing up behind me, Okita, and it was fucking rad. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. 
so good. Like the fire effect that goes behind him, the cut, the way he kind of sets it up, the way he's kind of like reminiscing and thinking about like the the things that could have happened in life and stuff like that. And he just completely destroys this guy in his car. Same thing goes for Hijikata as he's kind of fighting. I thought that was great. Um, a lot of like the references of like how life could be or should be, stuff like that was great. Um, and then at the end when they're talking about like all the potential regrets, his sister reminds him like, hey, never look back. Go forward. I never... You guys feel like... Uh, like you abandoned me like i think even gintoki says in a previous episode they deserve to get like hit for leaving behind a good woman like you and she kind of laughs it off but she sees it as like no you can't do that you have you have to move forward that's all you can do you can never look back and just know that for when i saw you leave i was proud and I will always be proud of you. And I was like, God damn, don't do this to me. Yeah, that, that shit hurted. Like, it it hurt so big much. Time. And Okita's voice actor is doing such a fucking fantastic job when, he, when she, she actually dies. And you hear like this, uh, like something you never hear from, just like this burst out of emotion. It's like, God damn, it's a hard episode. <laughs> it's a hard, it's so emotionally draining by the end. And then you have the moment with Hijikata, like, eating the chips, and it shows that he never went to go see her, and it's like, oh, this is just all so sad. <laughs> Why are you making me feel this way? Oh, uh, so fucking well done, though. So good. And then, <laughs> the, the, if there was one single negative here, it's that after all this, and the ED plays, and you're like, oh, you're emotionally stunted. You see the next episode preview, and it's like, there's a giant dick tower being made. <laughs> That's the yeah, word. I don't. I don't want to talk about it because you haven't seen it yet. No, we'll, well, at least not on the air. No, um, wait. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for next week. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, say right now, probably not the greatest way it's to follow. It's one that. of the worst little mini arcs I, of the whole series so far for me. It was, <laughs> look... and I'm not just saying this because of the current episodes. It it was genuinely atrocious. I can't wait to talk about it next week. But for this one, I was glad to keep it this way. I may have ran out of time, but I really do genuinely think I would have not been in the right mindset to see him just because of how well done this one was. But God, God damn. And then there's even some other stuff like someone who made a mention here. Um, like I said beforehand, this is odd. The reference here is that uh, the thing that she is dying from is tuberculosis, which is what actually killed uh, the real Okita. So this is their way of kind of like making reference to that is having two Okitas, one that dies from um, tuberculosis and the one that gets to live on. So I thought that was a kind of cool way to make reference to Okita, which is funny enough in actual like Japanese um, movies and TV shows like that. It's actually pretty common to have a female Okita. Like, at some point, they started, like, because um, in Fate Grand Order, obviously, they have a gender-bent version. So I thought, like, oh, that that's fate. They always do that. But actually, no, it turns out, like, in some specific medias, it's not uncommon to have a female Okita. And I was like, that's, I had no idea. So this is another way of, I guess, also mentioning the fact of there being a male and a female Okita. And then we know, thanks to Jampudi, that there's also Okita turns into a female Okita at some point. Yeah, there's um, apparently a whole, a whole gender like gender bend arc yeah that we'll get to eventually yeah at some point um, i don't know when it is yeah and then there's also references to the kanji themselves in the name um this is from someone who showed up on twitter to tell me like the flavors and the symbols have like meanings like the kanji used for spicy has two meanings the former and painful which links with toshi's words at the end and I always like to see Mitsuba's spiciness represent how it gives flavor, love, to the numb and cold mayo, Toshi. So, Aww. I thought that was cool. I agree. I was like, damn, that is real. There's, like, a lot of, That's in a lot of ways. That's for such a stupid thing. It is. <laughs> like, but it also feels like, that, <laughs> based off of this show, I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of level of dumb detail that would go into this. And funny enough, I also realized in these set of episodes, they actually call Hijikata by his first name, which is Toshi. Because they usually never do that. Um, so, yeah. A lot of things going on here. This might... Oh, man. I think so far. I, I think I'd have to really sit down and think of it. I actually think this might be my favorite episode we've seen of 
Gintama so far. Not including the silly ones, which I have to put into a separate one. The Death Note one might be the funniest one we've ever seen. Uh, or, not, oh no, no, the one where the prince hot, damn, okay, that's a different conversation. But in terms of pure drama seriousness, this one has to be one of my favorite ones. I thought it was just so well done. And in two episodes of arc, they were able to do so, li- they were able to put so much emotion with a character that I literally knew for maybe at most 40 minutes. <laughs> but by the end of it, I super cared about everything and how her, she felt like she had always kind of been there. And I felt the pain of the characters of losing this specific person to them. So, yeah, that's how I feel. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, really fucking good. From from start to finish, ridiculously good. Um, Gintoki almost fell out of place. <laughs> it was so well put together. Otherwise, um, yeah, he's kind of there as like I think I agree with someone who says a lot of the time it feels like Gintoki is there to kind of represent the author, like with the specific advice that he gives, and kind of be there to kind of like give his piece about the specific situation. And I think in this one, it definitely kind of feels that way. Um, it does show that he does care about her in like the small amount, because a lot of them are making reference to the fact that they got like baggy eyes because they're not sleeping because they're, they care so much about her. And when uh, Gintoki wakes up from his nap, you can see that he's clearly also sleep deprived <laughs> and he's not been sleeping well. Cause he's been trying to make sure that everything's fine. So, uh, yeah. I forgot what I was saying. Go ahead, Zen. Keep going with what you're feeling. <laughs> uh, nothing really that we haven't already talked about. It was just, like, really good all the way from start to finish. All of the the action was fucking amazing. All of the Hijikata versus the Grunt scenes were great. Uh, Okita slicing the car was crazy. Mm. It's just fucking... It's good. It's real good. Yeah. Some just good old samurai shit. Just be like, yeah. There's even some nice references to Just Away dolls that we just have not mentioned just because there's so much good shit to talk about. Yeah, when he pulls the Just Away out and throws it, I fucking started laughing. <laughs> I love the Just Away so much. Uh, I like when they showed all the uh, crazy black market weapons. One of the Just Away dolls wearing a Gundam helmet was there. <laughs> <laughs> really good stuff. So, yeah, that is the end of this arc. Oh boy, just great stuff. Well, I'm glad to be talking to you. I'm just so happy to be talking about Gintama with you again, Zen. It's been a while, but goddamn, these episodes reminded me how much I missed this. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it's been watching Gintama again because I haven't watched it until today since we went on our long hiatus from hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a nice return to like, ah, this is calming, this is soothing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And hopefully we will be able to continue it next week as we discuss the episodes we were unable to see the this week, which would be episodes... Uh, let me, actually, let me look at the full list, just to be sure. Because I don't want to... Shit, what am I doing? All of a sudden, nothing works. Uh, okay. Mm. Yes, next up the next one we will see episodes 88, 89, 90. And yeah, that should be good for next week, 3 episodes. Uh though based on what Zen says, maybe we should up that up to just a little bit more so we'd have maybe potentially more chances of hitting on something that's good. Uh so maybe we can see episodes 88, 89, 90. 91 and try our shots there what do you feel zen yeah that should be fine yeah four episodes for next week but thank you much very much for joining us for this week's uh two episodes two fantastic episodes i was afraid that we weren't gonna have much to talk about but it turned out we almost went 44 minutes just specifically talking about these two two episodes (laughs) two really fucking banger ass episodes for sure uh, as always, you can find Zen over on his channel. You did have to take a small break from Shonen and Shell because of work, didn't you? Yeah, we took we took this week off. We're going to do a double episode this upcoming Sunday. 
Mm, well, you can catch some of that. You want to see Zen talking about manga and get spoiled for the manga. <laughs> All you anime onlys, feel free to go over the Shonen and Chill, where they do a bunch of talky talk. I assume. I've never seen the show. I assume it's good. <laughs> I can only assume it's great stuff. <laughs> The, it's mainly because I haven't actually caught up to a lot of the manga that you're talking about. <laughs> I still need to catch up. I'm so bad. I've, I, but I'm caught up on the important ones: uh, Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man and uh, World Trigger, the three most, the three pillars of Shonen Jump, and my hero as well. <laughs> oh man, but. Yeah, and you can find more videos of me featuring me on here and more Shonen and Jump. Man, what the fuck is going on with my phone? I was about to say Shonen and Chill Jump for our show. More Shonen Archive over here. Uh, yeah, and as always, you can if you want to show support for the show, you can always leave a like, comment, subscribe. That helps a whole bunch thanks to YouTube stuff. But in general, just watching it is good enough for us. Until next time, we'll see you in the next Shonen Archive, which hopefully won't be too far away. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.